What's up? Medite here. And in this video, we will be covering the muscles of the hand. So the muscles of the upper limb are divided into four parts according to their anatomical location. The first group are the muscles of the shoulder joint. Then we have the muscles of the arm, muscles of the forearm, and then we have the muscles of the hand. So again, the muscles of the hand are what we're going to focus on. Now, the muscles of the hand are divided into specific regions. Some sources might differ in the classification of them, but all the muscles are the same. So, muscles of the hand can be divided into the thernal muscles for the thumb, hypothernal muscles for the pinky, and the middle hand muscles, which can further be divided into the interosseal muscles and the lumbrical muscles. So, these are the muscles we're going to try to visualize today, and we will start with the thernal muscles. Now, the thernal muscles consist of four muscles. They're the abductor pollicis brevis, opponens pollicis, flexor pollicis brevis, and adductor pollicis. Now, let's turn the hand like this, and then remove a couple of layers until we get to the bone. Opponens pollicis is this muscle right here. It originates from the flexor retinoculum and the trapezium bone of the wrist. Flexor retinoculum is a band of connective tissue that is formed by the fascia of the lower arm, and we'll talk briefly about it when we cover the fascia of the upper extremity, but for now, just know that this muscle originates from this retinoculum, and then it inserts at the base of the first metacarpal bone, and the function of it is a position and flexion of the thumb, meaning pulling the thumb towards the little finger. So that's this one. Next we have the flexor pollicis brevis, which is this muscle right here. It originates from the flexor retinoculum as well, and the deepest part of it originates from the distal wrist bones, the trapezium and the trapezoideum. It then inserts at the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb, and its function is more or less the same as the opponent's pollicis. Next we have the adductor pollicis, which is this one. It has an oblique head and a transverse head. The oblique head originates from the capitate and the base of the second to the third metacarpal bones, and the transverse head originates from the third metacarpal bone, and they both insert at the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. The function of this muscle is adduction of the thumb, more or less as the name says. So that's this one. The last thernal muscle is the abductor pollicis brevis, which originates from the flexor retinoculum and inserts at the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. It's called abductor pollicis brevis, so it abducts the thumb. And that was all the muscles of the thernal region. Now, let's do the hypothernal muscles. The first one is the opponens digiti minimi, which is this one. It originates from the flexor retinoculum and the hamatum, and it inserts at the base of the fifth metacarpal bone. The function of this muscle is a position of the little finger, basically pulling it towards the thumb. Next, we have the flexor digiti minimi brevis, which is this one. This muscle originates from the flexor retinoculum and the hamatum, and it inserts at the base of the proximal phalanx of the little finger. Its function is in its name, flexion of the little finger. Next, we have the abductor digiti minimi, which is this one. It originates from the flexor retinoculum, as well as the pisiform, and it inserts at the proximal phalanx of the little finger. And its function, can you guess it? That would be abduction of the little finger, pulling it away from the third finger. The last muscle of the hypothernal region is the palmaris brevis. This muscle originates from the flexor retinoculum as well, this one, and it also originates from the palmar aponeurosis, which is the structure that the palmaris longus inserts on. The palmar aponeurosis is primarily a fibrous triangle covering the palm to protect the neurovascular structures underneath it and it also fuses with the superior palmar fascia at some parts. We will talk briefly about this one when we talk about the fascia of the upper limb. So, it originates from these structures, and it inserts at the skin of the palm on the ulnar side. So, when this muscle contracts, it pulls the skin and produces wrinkles on the hypothernal side to mainly tense the palmar aponeurosis. So, that was the muscles of the hypothernal region. Now, let's talk about the middle hand muscles. And we will start with the interosseal muscles. There's a palmar interosseal and a dorsal interosseal. So let's do the palmar interosseal first. The palmar interosseal are three muscles located in the second to fourth interosseal space between the metacarpals, as you see here. So let's remove and fade a couple of muscles to see them better. These muscles originate from the medial side of the second metacarpal bone, 
the lateral side of the fourth metacarpal bone and the lateral side of the fifth metacarpal bone, and they insert at the proximal phalanx of the second, fourth and fifth finger. When these muscle fibers contract, they adduct the fingers, basically pulling the second and fourth and fifth fingers towards the third finger, as you see here. So that's this one. Then we have the dorsal interosseal muscles. There are four dorsal interosseal muscles located in the first to fourth interosseal spaces between the metacarpals, as you see here. They originate between the metacarpal bones of the first to fifth fingers, and they insert at the proximal phalanx of the second to fourth fingers. When these muscle fibers contract, they abduct the fingers, as you see here, meaning they pull the second and fourth finger away from the third finger. Awesome. So that's these two. Then we have a system of muscles called the lumbricals, which are here. These are four muscles that correspond to the second to the fifth fingers. They all originate from the tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus, and they insert at the proximal phalanx of the second to the fifth fingers. The lumbricals are actually a very practical muscle to have because they give our fingers the possibility to flex the proximal phalanx while extending the middle and the distal phalanges of the fingers. So that was all the muscles of the middle group that I wanted to talk about. And with that, my friends, we have covered all the muscles of the upper limb.